Golf Central on YouTube, brought to you by the Rogue ST Woods and Irons from Callaway. Hey there, I'm George Zabarikis, and this is your Golf Central update. Monday after the Masters, and we're looking at the champ, Scotty Scheffler. What a performance he put together. Four rounds under par and closing out his first career major victory. Scheffler closing with a Sunday 71 to win by three over Rory McIlroy. That eight under 64 tying the lowest ever final round in Masters history and McIlroy's lowest round at Augusta. That solo second his best career finish, but for Scheffler, what a run he has now been on. Four wins his last six starts. Afterwards, the world number one sat down with our Todd Lewis. Scotty, when I talked to you Saturday night, you said you were not going to think about putting on the green jacket. You admitted after your round on Sunday, you cried like a baby. You were overwhelmed. What changed from Saturday night to having that heaviness on Sunday morning? I couldn't tell you other than I failed miserably at my goal not to think about it. <laughs> um, I, I just think there's, you know, there's a lot more that comes with this than just winning a golf tournament. You know, um, my personal life won't change a bit, but my life outside of my home and, you know, my normal routine will definitely change. And, you know, I, I talked a lot with my wife about that this morning because, you know, we love our lives right now. We don't, we don't really want anything to change. And so, this definitely brings, you know, some new aspects into our life. And I didn't, you know, I don't know if I'm prepared for it. And that, that was really the stress of the moment was, you know, are we truly ready for this? And, you know, she is, she's so smart and she's so much wiser than I am. And, you know, she snapped me back to reality real quick and, uh, you know, reminded me of, uh, you know, who's in control of our lives. So the golf wasn't the fear there? No, I mean, obviously, I, I if you're in the lead, I'm never, you know, I'm not going to say never, but you know, the odds are I'm not going to have a better chance to win my first major than going into Sunday with a three-shot lead. And, you know, especially with this tournament being the Masters tournament. And, uh, you know, there's definitely some stress there. You know, I've, I've worked my whole life to put myself in a position where I could win this tournament. And to have such a great opportunity, there's, there's definitely some stress surrounding that as well. But, you know, the overwhelming part of it was, you know, life outside the ropes. You and I were talking not too long ago, and you said being picked by Steve Stricker as a captain's pick and going and performing well, being in that team room with all those great players was a key moment in your career. It was a moment of acceptance. How do you think you're perceived now, given where you are? I'm not really sure, to be honest with you. I do think, you care? I mean, you know, that's up, up to you guys. Uh, to be accepted in that team room meant the world to me. Um, for those guys to want me on that team, for us to perform in the way that we did at that tournament, and to win the cutback in such convincing fashion was, was so much fun. And I'm so grateful just to have been a part of that team. And, you know, I'm, I'm thankful to the guys in the team room. I'm thankful to Captain Stricker just for having me a part of that squad because, you know, at the time I was 100% the last guy on that team. I was the low, lowest ranking player. I didn't have a tour win. You know, it, it took some guts for them to put me on that team and to, ha to have the vote of my peers and, um, you know, it definitely gave me a lot of confidence. And that's what made me feel so comfortable that week. You know? you know, it's interesting. This is your first start at the Masters as the world's number one player. And, and you said pretty much all week, I, I don't feel differently as the number one player in the world. Do you feel differently as a Masters champion now? No, not really. You know, I, like I told you earlier, I haven't even seen myself in this jacket. So I don't, <laughs> I don't even know if it fits. But, um, you know, I, I'm going to enjoy this one. I'm going to go home for a few days and, you know, just, just really soak it in and, I've achieved a, something that I, I only dreamed and, you know, I never really thought was a possibility. And so for me, this is, this one's really special. I'm going to go back a year ago. You were outside the top 20 in the world, still searching for your first PGA Tour win. You're now number one in the world with four wins, including, of course, a major championship. How would you describe your fulfillment right now? And what more do you want to achieve? You know, I, I think... I think golf doesn't really fulfill me. And so if I show up at Zurich and, you know, Palmer and I don't play that great, I'm going to be frustrated again with golf. Um, that's just how it goes. You know, golf doesn't satisfy my heart and doesn't satisfy my soul. And that's something I know going into it. And so, you know, what's, what's really enjoyable for me is, you know, having a nice life off the golf course, you know, having a wife that loves me. And, um, you know, like I said, life off the golf course is pretty good right now. And so that's the kind of stuff that satisfies me versus anything on the golf course. 
You have a great perspective and you're a great champion. Congratulations, Scotty. Thanks, Todd. Appreciate it. Always great to hear the Masters champion with Todd Lewis afterwards. And look at this run that Scotty Scheffler has been on. A look at the list of players who have had three plus PGA Tour wins before the Masters. Pretty rare era. The last player to do so, Arnold Palmer in 1960. How about the run Jimmy Demerit was on? 1940 and 47. 1940, Demerit with six wins that season, including slipping on the green jacket winning the Masters.